Well, hey guys, what do you know? As soon as I sit down to do the weekly roundup, I get a couple of alerts on my phone here for some breaking news. So we'll cover that right after the intro. So the first bit of breaking news that hit my phone as I sat down here is from Disney. Now, Disney's Polynesian Village Resort was first set to reopen, I think, on August 12th. And then they changed that to have it reopen on October 4th. But the news is now it is not going to reopen. That's Disney's Polynesian Resort will not open until the summer of 2021. So a bit of bad news, especially if you had something booked there at the Polynesian. Um, I know I didn't. Not a place I could afford to stay at too often. But if you did have something scheduled there, I'm sure Disney will reach out to you via email or some other manner to uh, have you reschedule or have you place in a different resort. So summer of 2021 seems about right to me. I still anticipate things to be a little slower in the beginning of 2021 here in the Orlando area. But I personally expect a big bounce back in the summer of 2021. Uh, fingers crossed that I am right. We know how hard it is to predict the future nowadays. But uh, now the other piece of breaking news that I got is good news. It's from Busch Gardens Tampa. And what they are doing is they are launching a new 2021 fun card. So for a limited time, when you purchase a 2021 fun card, you will get the rest of the year 2020 for free. And quite honestly, we shouldn't be paying for 2020. 2020 is costing us a lot already. So uh, now this is something, now I don't have tickets or passes for Busch Gardens right now, mainly because I hate driving I-4 to Tampa. But now with this new offer, I may consider getting some passes for Busch Gardens. Uh, for, that way I would have it for all of 2021. And then the rest of this year, when Nikki gets home, we're going to have a talk about this. And now on to the weekly roundup I had previous prepared for this video. And we are going to start at SeaWorld, which is trying something new called Flicks and Fireworks. Flicks and Fireworks is a park and view drive-in theater at one of the SeaWorld parking lots. So, uh, oh, and it comes with a food rally. So what you do, you go visit SeaWorld. And I think this is actually, it is $50 per vehicle. You go there. You participate in the food truck rally, get all your favorite food from your favorite food trucks, and then you will be able to watch movies and fireworks. So some of the movies that they are using would be uh, like older movies. So like Grease, The Goonies, um, another movie was what, uh, Toy Story 4. So some of those older, The Lion King is another one that they'll be having. Uh, but this is only through Labor Day weekend. So we have one more weekend if you want to make plans to do this flicks and fireworks. Staying with SeaWorld, their theme park and their water park, which is called Aquatica, will be returning to a seven day a week operating schedule. And that will be now until October 5th. So who knows what will happen after October 5th. But as for the short term, back to a seven day operating schedule, but what I do advise, since the theme parks appear to be in a state of flux, uh, you never know what days they're going to be. I mean, you know if you check the website, which is what I'm advising you to do. Check their website before you go to make sure they haven't amended anything or changed any of their operating hours. So go there, check their operating days and their operating hours as we tend to get news every other day, it seems like, about them changing their schedule. So if you want to visit one of the theme parks here in the area, I do suggest before you come, visit their website. However, I do need to remind you that SeaWorld is one of the theme parks in the area that does require you to make a reservation before entering. Sticking with SeaWorld, for guests who make reservations at the Sharks Underwater Grill restaurant, as part of the Magical Dining Month, not only can they enjoy a three-course meal for $35 per person, but also enjoy park access. Let me dive a little deeper into this. For those who don't know, Magical Dining Month is something that happens here in Orlando, and I believe this is the 15th year of that. A lot of the area restaurants participate in this, as the, some of the proceeds do go to charity. So you have a 
large participation in this magical dining month. Uh, but what it is, at all these different restaurants, for $35 a person, you get a, a three-course meal, an appetizer, an entree, and a dessert. But as far as SeaWorld is concerned, at their restaurant, you can have park access after you check in for your reservation. Now, what you need to do to make a reservation is visit SeaWorld's website. In fact, I'll leave a link to the exact uh, place you need to go to make that reservation as part of the Magical Dining Month. In fact, I'll leave a link that gives you more information on all of the participating restaurants for Magical Dining Month. But uh, if you want to do Sharks Underwater Grill, do that. Go ride a roller coaster. Go see some cute little animals. Reservations can be made at SeaWorld's official website. I'll leave a link to it. And as part of that, uh, the parking fee will be waived at the front gate as long as you can prove you have a reservation for Sharks uh, Underwater Grill as part of Magical Dining Month. Now here is some good fun news regarding Disney World. The Mouse House will amend their no costume policy as part of their Halloween ce celebration that they're doing uh, in lieu of Mickey's not so scary Halloween party. So um, from September 5th through October 31st, guests will be allowed to wear costumes. Now there are some caveats to this and let me explain those. This is for all guests, not just kids. Full-blown costumes with masks will be allowed for children younger than the age of 14 years old and all guests will still be required to wear a face covering as part of the new health guidelines. However, there are some restrictions, so visit Disney's website before you create that spooky masterpiece of a costume. For example, no obscene language or obscene graphics will be allowed. And also, per Edna Mode, no capes. Seriously, no capes. Uh, Disney will not allow full-length capes as part of your costume. The Magic Kingdom will also be home to a Halloween cavalcade starring Mickey and a lot of his friends all dressed up in their Halloween fall fashion. And of course there will be seasonal food and drinks and merchandise available for you to purchase. Of course there will be. So not much in regards to Universal News this video, but last week the governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis, did host a round table at Universal where he discussed how pleased he is with the current state of the theme parks, how they did the uh, with the reopenings. So pleased he is exploring ways for them to go ahead and to increase capacity at the parks. In fact, his direct quote is, We think the capacity can be increased, he said. When you have the protocols that they have in place, you know, we are very comfortable at the state level. So there you go. Good news. You know, things are starting to get more normal back in Florida and hopefully normal enough for you guys to visit. And look who just showed up for the rumors. Hey guys. Working half days, are we, Nikki? Just a little bit. <laughs> gave you, I gave you the first half of the video off. Thanks. I'm a nice boss. <laughs> oh, what? No, I'm not the boss of her. Oh, no. No. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, we don't have any rumors. So no rumor alert this week. Oh. But if you don't mind, if you can ask me the questions the viewer submitted. Of course. I'll try to answer them. Sounds good. All right, this is from Nikki Macon. Uh, what are the things you normally recommend to take or eat for motion sickness before going on rides? I know one was ginger or something, um, but I always forget. Thanks, guys. It is ginger. Right. Yeah, and like we like to juice things, so we actually juice ginger root. That's right. Uh, and make it in a team. But I guess you could have maybe a ginger ale. Right, and they also have ginger candy that you can oh, yeah, take they as do. well. Yeah, so yeah. there you go. Ginger. <laughs> Best for that. Um, other than, you know, maybe Dramamine or something yeah, like you're, that. Yeah, exactly. You're over-the-counter things from the CVS or whatever. Exactly. Moving on to question number two. <laughs> All right. So this is from Billy F. I'm not going to try the last name. Sorry. Sometimes it's best not to try the last name. <laughs> yeah. So wondering if you know of Universal decorating early for Christmas since no HHN this year. Normally they would start decorating for Christmas right after HHN, which typically ends around November 1st or 2nd or 3rd, depending on when that last weekend is. Right. Um, so I don't anticipate them doing anything earlier than November 1st. I would, say, I would say so. And I would hope not. I would not want them decorating for Christmas before Halloween even occurred. That's me. That's me. That's so, true. No, no that makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. So around November 1st, the first week in November, they should 
be starting those Christmas decorations. Exactly. And then it usually takes several days to come out too. It comes out in phases. It does. It doesn't all just poof overnight. It usually comes out in phases um, with mm -hmm. Universal. Yep. Okay, next one is from Heather Cox. Um, are there any types of restaurants that you'd like to see at the parks? Anything that isn't there already that you would love to see come oh, in? Oh, you um, know what? Doesn't even have to be a restaurant chain. Sound the rumor alert. Okay, rumor alert. Hey, we got rumor it in. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. This reminds me of something I heard, I think, at the beginning of the year. Okay. So I would like to see a Saturday Night Live restaurant come in. And, and you heard this as a rumor? I heard it as a rumor that that was a potential happening. And SNL, you know, because they do have the Today Cafe. Right. They're in studios. And NBC Universal or you know, the same thing. Okay. So I did hear the rumor. I think it was beginning this year. Gotcha. That uh, an SNL, a Saturday Night Live cafe or dining establishment. Okay. Um, I would love to see that. Who wouldn't want to order some sweaty balls? From, from the SNL Cafe. For example, they could play off the, several of the skits okay. for menu items. You know, they have the whole, you know, the bears. So they could have like a Chicago section of the menu. Things like you. that. Okay. They, there's, there's so much SNL material from them to play off of That's true. for the menu. Yeah, decades. So <laughs> I, would like, I would like to see a Saturday Night Live Cafe. All right. There we go. Oh, hope it happens. Very cool. Okay, this is from Derek Carnes. Uh, how strict is Disney on watching two-year-olds with masks? We really want to go to Disney Springs while in Florida next month, but my son will not wear a mask. I feel for you. Is it Derek? Mm -hmm. I feel for you. Uh, yeah, keeping a mask on a young child like that. Now, yeah. the parks, Disney and Universal, they walk around checking on masks mm -hmm. and yeah. asking people if it's below the nose to put it above the nose. So. Mm -hmm. I would say the parks are really vigilant on that. Mm -hmm. um, now, if your two-year-old is in a stroller and they happen to have a sippy cup <laughs> <laughs> near them, they're drinking and they're seated. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I don't think that's a nice way to skirt the system. But, you know, I mean, because he is a two-year-old, it's so hard. It is hard, I feel yeah, for you. exactly. Um, okay, this one is from Joseph Morris. I was wondering if you and Nikki had great places to eat for a one-year anniversary. Attire, of course, would be more like khaki shorts and nice shirts. And for her, a sundress, we'd love to experience food that goes with the atmosphere. Also, she loves eel sushi. Mm. Aha. So, yeah, so like vacation clothes. Yeah. Um, at City Walk at Universal, a lot of people love cowfish. Right, if you love sushi, that's the place to hit up. I don't know if they have eel sushi. Right. But a lot of sushi there. And and it's highly regarded. People really love that place. Right. I think my next favorite would be Anahitos. Yes, yes. Those are my two favorites. And that's a Mexican spot. Right. And I really like it there too, so. Yeah. Right. And they have live music and, you know, live performances mm -hmm. there too. Mm -hmm. That's there you cool. go. There's two options for you. Yeah. All right, next one is from Sean. I believe there should be a new upgrade to Kong Skull Island ride. The ride should be based on the newest movie and not the 2005 movie. Do you believe they should update the ride to the newest movie? Okay, so Sean thinks the current Kong is too dated already. That's from like the 2005, I think, yeah. Peter Jackson Kong. Right. And they've done another Kong since then with like Brie Larson was in it, Sam L. Jackson was in it. Okay. And that Kong's a lot bigger. Because yes, he's, he's huge. Yeah, he's part of their like monster verse. I don't think, wait, maybe not, I should say Monsterverse, but, uh, you know, because they are coming out with a new movie, Kong versus Godzilla. Ooh, that'll be fun. But for me, I really like the Peter Jackson version, the, the kind of the tried and true classic story of Kong. Right, and wasn't it based, you know, very similarly to the original? Yes, yes. Yeah. That, is, that one is your classic Kong story. Gotcha. Okay. All right, the next one is from O'Neill. I was wondering, what are the restrictions when it comes to bringing in a GoPro camera on rides? What rides can you bring on or not bring the camera on? Disney, you can record on anything, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. But he's asking about Universal, and right. Universal is very strict with cameras and recording. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the rides that you have to go through a metal detector um, Hulk and Rip Ride Rocket, no way. Right. Um, but they really don't allow it on anything. The only thing 
that I've recorded on that doesn't seem to be a big deal to them is Popeyes and Bluto's barges. Right. So um, any ride, any YouTube video you see where have like a uh, Hagrid's motorbike adventure. Right. Uh, they shouldn't have recorded that. And I I mainly follow the rules. I'm not saying I toe the line all the, all the time, but uh, I try to stay on the good side of Universal. That's right. That's why I've never filmed on Hagrid's or anything like that. Mm-hmm. So, mm, no. No GoPros or cameras on, on the rides. All right. Tony Pacheco? Oh, is that the name? Close enough. Okay. Is Hagrid's virtual line back for good? Not for good. It comes and goes. It does. They're able to turn on and off those virtual lines however they want. Exactly. It seems like on busier days, on the weekends, let's yeah. just say, Saturday. that's when the virtual line will pop back up. Mm-hmm. During the weekdays, it you know it seems to be standby. Mm-hmm. So it's however they think the you know the crowd level is going to be if yeah. they want to use virtual lines or not. Mm-hmm. So if you come during the weekday, most likely Hagrid's would be standby. Come on a Saturday, you might be looking at a virtual line. Right, exactly. Okay, last one is from Charles. In your opinion, what is the best and worst changes Universal or Disney has made, either with respect to operations or experience? Uh, the changes. Um, best changes, I really like the social distancing at all the parks. <laughs> we do, yeah. Social distancing is, is good in lines. Uh, yeah, I enjoy elbow room, being able to, you know, turn around. And, and not, the airflow. Yeah, people not, like, coming right up on your back, like, okay, let's get going to the line, you know. Yeah. So, I, you know, hope I like that. I wouldn't mind if it stayed. Okay. Now, the worst thing, the worst thing ever is this Disney reservation system. <laughs> I despise it. It's pretty bad. Oh, you haven't been seeing a lot of Disney videos from me lately? Yeah. Um, that's because I have my reservations made, mm-hmm. but they are not until like after Labor Day and beyond because right. those were the parks I wanted to go to. Right. And then once I booked those, I didn't want to try to like cancel one to try to get an earlier one. Yeah. You didn't want to risk the chance of canceling. I know. Yeah. I didn't want to cancel at Hollywood so Studios and end up having to go to Epcot. Yeah. I like Epcot. And so I am not happy with the system whatsoever as a pass holder. Right. You know, the amount of money I paid for my pass, I paid that money to go 365. Well, I had a couple. I've got like uh, some blockout days around two. Easter yeah. and Christmas. Exactly. So we'll say like I, two weeks. I bought that ticket to go 300 days a year. Right. Whenever I felt like it. If I woke up in the morning, like, you know what? I need to go do a Disney video. I could go do that. Mm-hmm. I can't do it now. No. The value is not the same. Um, I don't know what their plans are. I know Disney likes the technology that's been implemented Uh during this time frame. Uh Uh-huh. But who knows how far they're going to carry on with this reservation system. I think you're able to make a reservation for like... A next for up to like the next year, like September twenty one. Uh, yeah, they're still taking reservations. So, wow! But that doesn't mean they can't just turn it off and like, okay, come whenever you want. I got you. But who knows when they're going to uh, get rid of that, or if they will? I don't. I don't know. But it sucks. So here's <laughs> the, here's another bad thing at both parks: uh, getting food in a timely manner. It's, yeah. Very difficult. It is super challenging. Quick um, service is not quick. Now, it's no. not so bad if you have a reservation inside of a place, like for us, like Finnegan's or right. something. Which that, is what we would highly recommend you do. Don't do quick service because it, t- it takes even longer. Yeah, quick service has been a pain. It, yes. Whole, you got a mobile order, and there's uh, so they've got the, half the number of tables available for social distancing. Right, and a lot of times that seems like is what takes the longest mm-hmm. is finding a seat in a yeah. even a quick service place so we kind of found a little something out today was that if you ordered it to go so you walk up and you say okay i mobile ordered can i get it to go and then you just go sit on a bench somewhere yeah this was that at, was a lot faster yeah that was at islands of adventure we were trying to get into burger digs mm-hmm. and it was a 30 minute wait to get the table and this is a quick service mm-hmm. you know with we already had ordered on the on the yeah, app. Yeah. So I just went up to the team member working up there and mm-hmm. said, "Well, what if I can I just have mine to go so I could walk it down 
to the uh, the splash zone. Right. And she, oh, no. she was like, oh, that's no big deal. And she just looked at our little app number uh-huh. yeah. and came back within three minutes, I think. Yeah, it was super fast. Well, there you go. That's all the questions and answers for today. If you want to submit a question to potentially be used in a video, visit MyRicksFlix.com. Scroll all the way down to the bottom of the home page. There's a little section for you to uh, submit your question or a video suggestion. Cool. All right. With all that being said. Don't miss the magic. Don't miss the fun. Thanks for watching Rick's Flicks. And now it's time to relax. Mm-hmm.